Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. This is the weekly reading your comments. I think this is reading your comments number eight. So that would be two months we have been doing this. Or no. No, it can't be. There's no way it's reading your comments. Wait, well, what was last week's? Holy crap. Yeah, so this is reading your comments number eight. So you guys have been sticking around for two months. <clears throat> in this where I record this video where I read all the comments and then I set it up for a premiere so that way all of you guys can go down in the premiere chat and then I jump in the premiere chat with you guys and we have some fun talking about the previous topics of the week. So there's kind of two ways that I've worked this in order to engage with you guys. So if you guys like what I'm doing here, go down, subscribe, uh, hit the like button and share this with everybody. I should say ring the notification bell. That's what I'm supposed to say, but I want this to reach as many people as I can. So I would love for you guys to share this with everybody. And before we get into reading your comments, I have to introduce coffee because this has turned into the weekly coffee show. Because I have to record these, it's like 8.15 in the morning right now, and um, I woke up late. I woke up at like 8 o'clock, and I was like, oh, crap. So I made coffee, and then I ran downstairs, and yeah, I might still... Anyway, let's get into reading your comments, guys. Thank you so much, and I hope that for you guys that are checking this out down in the premiere chat, you guys are having a good time. Let's go. Okay, so from last week's reading the comments which is reading the comments number seven um why does it do top i want newest first so that way i can go in chronological order um not a whole lot of people commented last week but ram just says royce because <laughs> ram does that <coughs> um uh dcc i enjoyed your shadow binders uh video uh, the books look uh, really good and sound very interesting. Uh, those, thank you so much, uh, DCC. I appreciate that. Um, Agent of Zalem, you might find that some people won't watch your Shadowbinders videos or comic uh, overview videos until they've had a chance to read it themselves. Personally, I found um, the webcomic and read uh, the first couple of chapters before watching your video because I don't have the physicals yet. Yeah, I totally understand that. I get that. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. So, all right, that's really all the comments we had there. Because, well, the, most people comment in the premiere chat of that video. All right, Brendan Fraser returns with the whale. This video blew the hell up for my channel. Like, this video went insane for my channel. Um Could not believe all of the viewership. Not a lot of comments, but that's okay. I'm good with that. Um, John Smith says the mummy 1999 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Frazier was perfect in that movie and never failed to do an awesome job with what he was given. Uh, Gigakuma bro. I legit thought it would be a movie about a gamer addict who only, uh, plays pay to win games and always top ranks. Cause he's spending lots of money on the games, AKA a whale. Yeah, that would be, I, I told him, I was like, yeah, that would be the, the word for it. You know, um, that's kind of. I mean, that could be a thing. Um, Corey Sanford, uh, he played in uh, but 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 evilled and and Encino Man. Recently, he was in Doom Patrol series as a Robot Man. Inkart was my favorite as well. Yeah, Inkart was such a great Brendan Fraser movie. It's really really good. Uh, Xavier Guzman says I actually liked him in the Doom Patrol show. Okay, I've never even heard of Doom Patrol, so apparently I'm behind the times or something. I don't know. My friends give me shit. They're like, dude, you're the oldest. They're, they're like, dude, you're the youngest boomer I've ever met. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> All right. Uh, Garcia, XV Legend. George of the Jungle, Journey to the Center of the Earth, and Looney Tunes Back in Action were my most favorite movies from my childhood that happened to have the Brendan Fraser. Uh, he seems like... A likable chat in my eyes. Never knew he stepped out of Hollywood to focus more on his family life, which I can greatly respect. The dude comes back like the Phoenix, which I find to be pretty awesome. Maybe I should um, check out both his new movie and the first Mummy movie. Yeah, I never saw it. Shame on me. Now, uh, dude, there's so many movies I haven't seen. Like, there are so many iconic movies that I have not seen that people would roast me for. So... 
don't feel bad about not seeing the mummy movie. Um. <clears throat> All right, Grandma's favorite. I think the Mummy is uh, still the movie I've rewatched the most. It was always on AMC and TNT. I loved it every time. Uh, I have this random memory of when I hope it was in middle school back in 2002, 2004. Hey, so you're roughly my age. Um, and the day before heading to Florida, Disney, of course, uh, I was sick with a fever and sore and thought I'd have had to cancel the trip. I ended up sitting on the couch resting as much uh, as I could and watching uh, The Mummy, followed by House on Haunted Hill. Another great movie, lol. Uh, anyway, the next day I woke up fever gone, uh, only left with a minor sore throat. I believe the power of Brendan Fraser is what healed my virus, whatever it was. Uh, was a great trip, too. Oh, well, Grandma's favorite. Thank you so much. That was, I love when people share personal stories like that. It's so funny. It's so great. Uh, quarter, court of love, Larry, uh, he can raise his kids and be a family man. <laughs> I, I, I responded to this. I think he's making a joke here about like the divorce rates in the U S but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Laveria 95. I really hope I said your name properly. Uh, I'm so happy to see him doing movies again. My favorite Funko Pop is my Rick O'Connell that sits next to my PS5. Incard is also my favorite book. So I was thrilled to see him uh, in the movie. Blast from the Past is also a favorite of mine as well. The Whale isn't the type of movie I would normally see in theaters, but my husband and I will be happy to support Brendan and go see it. Yeah. Yeah, I might. i would probably do the same thing too. Like It's Brendan Fraser. I love the guy. I, all the movies that he's been in, I think he's just... He's just awesome. Uh, Kudmond X. Kudmond X. I don't know how to say that. It's also not even 8.30 in the morning. And you guys are making me pronounce your names. Oh, good lord. <clears throat> oh, this would be a good time to shout out my Gilded. It is down in the link in the description below. We have a fantastic community growing over there. We're getting D&D &D stuff going on. We talk about movies. We're... Talking about life, or everybody's sharing pictures of doggos. Like every day, there's pictures of doggos and pictures of cats, and not just like internet ones, but like the, the the funny things that their doggos and cats are doing. I showed a little video of me grilling in the rain yesterday. It was cool. So you guys should go into the gilded. It's fun. It's a fun time. It really is. Kudmond X. Uh, Brendan's my childhood actor, too. I think the last movie I saw him in was uh, that in cart one. Cool to see, see he's going to be making some money again. Yeah. Yeah, he went through some, like, gnarly... There was a lot of, like, abuse in his uh, circumstance, if I remember correctly. Uh, my wife went through this whole thing one time. It's just all this stuff that he went... I was like, oh, my God. Like, like, so he just kind of stepped back. I think he took minor roles for a long time and just, just kind of like make money and get by, but never really. But yeah, he, he went through some really gnarly stuff. It was heartbreaking. Um, and so to see him get a standing ovation from people, like he deserves that. This man like genuinely deserves that. And just to see him and just be emotional about it. Fuck. That was awesome. Uh, Ahmed Sha Shakib. Shakib Shakib. I'm, I'm gonna go with Ahmed Shakib. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, there was an episode of Scrubs uh, where uh, uh, Brendan Fraser played the brother of uh, the brother-in-law of Doctor Doctor Cox. Uh, it made sense seeing Doctor Cox always grumpy and hard, but later when you realize why he's like that, uh, it uh, makes Brendan pra Fraser's performance all. The more better. I'm a huge fan of the first Mummy film. I wish him all the best. Yes, I liked all of the, the Mummy films. I I understand that the third one had its issues, uh, and literally everybody was just there for a paycheck. Um, I understand that. Like, and that was even said. People were like, "No, we're just here for a paycheck." Um, I still like it. I still thought it was fun. I I don't know. I don't know. I'm less harsh on that one, but like, I also like the Expendables too. So, <laughs> I'm an action guy. I love my action adventures. <clears throat> oh no, I fucked it up. I hit the wrong button. Don't do that. Oh no, where'd it go? Uh...
All right, there we go. Um, ADJ, I'm genuinely happy to see Brendan Fraser making a comeback. He seems like a sweet, charming, genuine guy. Uh, and he can act your face clean off. Yes, very true, ADJ. Google must die. Oh, boy. Blast from the past uh, and the mummy I used to watch on HBO. Cable slash cable all the time as a kid. Really good movies. Yes. Uh, Adino won. School Ties was the first uh, was the first and still my favorite movie of his. I'm so glad to see him back. Um, Vesper, I love Brendan Fraser. Uh, Hillbilly PB, uh, Bedazzled is uh, a good Brendan Fraser flick. Uh, FIFA Craft says, uh, "Bro, learn to speak and redo this video." But why? <laughs> Um, I don't know what the hell this is. is. C T T R P R F L. I don't even know. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Anyway, it says earned, and I think he's just saying that Brendan Fraser earned that. I was like, I'm not sure what he meant. He just says earned, but yeah. Um, Austin Harath, uh, you have to watch Crash, okay? And then uh, the last one was Mad Sweet GT500. Uh, with Encino Man, bro. Oh. Uh, so thank you guys all for the comments on the Brendan Fraser gets what he deserves video. Because he does. He does get what he deserves. Uh, the next video is Eric July, The Ripperverse, and Woke Marketing. Um, this one got a lot of people. A lot of people were a lot of people were just like, dude, bro, you don't even know, dude. Bro. I'm like, fuck, stop. It's fine. All right, and the first one for the, you know, Eric July, Ripperverse, and Woke Marketing. Uh, great video. I hope all the political talk around the Ripperverse doesn't have much negative effect. Uh, people on both sides can't seem to realize he's a libertarian and that he means he's not right or left. Yeah, um, so he, well, and he's not a libertarian. He's an anarcho-capitalist, and actually uh, somebody came in and corrected that fact. And that's, again, that was one of the things that I talked about in the first Eric July videos that I did. <clears throat> He's not a libertarian. He's an anarcho-capitalist. Outside of that, though, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just... I'm tired of seeing... Like, I am glad that, like, all the right-wing media is giving him his day because, obviously, left-wing media won't... Even comic book media won't do it, which is, like... You would think out of all medias, comic book media would do it, but they're not. Um, like, even Bounding Into Comics isn't covering him so much. Like, I can't believe Bounding Into Comics didn't reach out to do an interview with him. That's... Uh, I don't think, yeah, I don't think they've reached out to do an interview with him. Like, bounding in the comics should fucking do that. But anyway, um, I'm just so tired of seeing this because he said his, like, he has said himself after people, he was like, well, no, my book's not anti-woke. He's like, if it had to be anything, it's like non-woke, but like. He shouldn't even have to fucking say that. He should just be like, guys, it's not political at all. He's like, I'm doing traditional storytelling. I'm not doing... Because the problem is, is that simply by injecting the word woke, regardless of how you're going to hyphenate it, anti, non, it doesn't matter. Once you introduce it, to introduce the word woke, you are intrinsically tying the idea of your book or whatever to the word woke in a combative way a uh or uh, a positive way that's it that's how people work that's how their minds work and i don't fucking like that and i'm just wondering if like, i'm just tired of seeing the conservative media do that to him and just say hey eric july made a huge success off of his non-political comic book bam if they would have just said non-fucking political it would have been totally fucking different but no um <clears throat> but yeah, so Agent of Zalem, thank you so much. Uh, Lionel Polo. Oh, and by the way, those guys are members of the Gilded. And I believe uh, Lionel Polo also joined the Gilded as well. I, uh, a very interesting question, but I think there are too many assumptions that have to be made uh, to even get an answer for this. You would have to assume how many people uh, these titles are turning away from just reading it, then assume how many of those people would be willing to check it out, then assume how many of those people would reach into their pockets to purchase something, and of course you would also 
uh, have to compare that to the amount of people who found out about the campaign by the way of these interviews and ended up purchasing something. Um, it's just really difficult if you look at it from an objective standpoint. Yes, I think that there are a lot of what you said. You know, if this, then what, right? If this, then questions, okay? I don't disagree with you, Lionel. But there are a lot of disaffected comic book readers out there who felt that the storytelling just went off the rails. And they're looking for something to get back into. It's like me. Like, give me a reason to love Star Wars again. And I will go back in on that like a crackhead who's been sober for 10 years, right? Because it's been about that long. Um, and I just, I'm wondering if this marketing wouldn't hurt the, um, maybe some of the returning comic book people. Maybe I'm wrong though. Could, could be entirely wrong. Charlotte Marsh. Good for him. <coughs> good for him. I guess, uh, yet to see how it helps, uh, to slow down the Wokian cultists or, uh, keeps the alphabet mob from trying to groom my children, but okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Charlotte March came in. I had to talk with her about it. I'm like, look, like you're the one who has to keep that from happening. Um, and I think she's, I think Charlotte Marsh might have mentioned that she's older. We had a, uh, we had a great exchange there. I love when Charlotte comments. She, you know, she comes at it from a different perspective, and I do, and I do appreciate that. And um, um, yeah, but she doesn't see how it's going to slow down the Wolkian cultists or keep the alphabet mod trying to groom their children. Well, because corporations want to run on money and they're not making any money on this Wokian stuff. And so when companies realize, Oh, well they're doing this over here and these guys are making a lot of money. We need to beat the pants off them. It'll change. It's going to take time though. It's going to take time. It really is. And that's the sad part is it's going to take time. G33X. Um, oh, and thank you so much, Charlotte Marsh. And thank you, everybody, for commenting. If I'm not saying thank you, I apologize. Thank you to everybody who is commenting. Uh, my brain's a little scattered. I literally, usually I wake up, you know, and I kind of get dressed, and then, you know, I'll make the coffee, and then I don't really, no, I woke up this morning, and I was like, okay, all right, I have to, I got to do this. So, yeah, I'm a little, a little less with it in the brain thing right now. Okay. G33X, I think part of uh, part of it is communicating to the audience that watches Fox News or the Daily Wire and the language they've grown to understand and speak, saying that the Ripperverse comics are non-woke is a way to illustrate to right-leaners that the comics don't pander to the social political views of the social justice left. Since the left has a stranglehold on popular culture and vehemently defends it, people on that side are highly unlikely to even consider buying from uh, anything from Ripper. Despite a lot of the political punditry on the right-wing media sources, they're a bit more open than left-wing outlets to allow libertarians, centrists, and other non-leftists on their uh, platforms to advertise or have conversations. Yes, they are, and they have been for for many, 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 many years. Um, the, and, I mean, because I don't talk about it a ton on the channel, but I, I have followed politics for a long time. Uh, I have been a subscriber of the Blaze TV. Uh, I've uh, subscribed to the Ben Shapiro YouTube channel. I like, and I actually still like a lot of their takes. Um, but yeah, so um, I know how corrupt Fox News is, and I won't watch them anymore. Um, they're pieces of garbage, and I th believe their shareholders are the same shareholders that own like CNN and MSNBC. So. Um, obviously, you know, they're just controlled opposition. That's all Fox News is, right? Can, Fox News is just, they, and it's the re Fox News gives everybody who's on the right a bad name because Fox News is paid to act like conservatives. They're not actually paid to be conservatives or libertarians or, you know, give two dams about federalism. But yeah, I think it, I don't know. I, I think it does communicate to the right-wing audiences, but um, I hope it just communicates in the right way. Um, Ram, I just noticed your lighting is a bit too bright. So I've turned it down, Ram. So let me know, is the lighting still too bright? Why you gotta be like that? 
Uh, Gigakuma, he's never styled his book or views as anti-woke. He simply wants to make a genuinely high-quality product that goes back to the basics of entertainment, which is escapism, something everyone coll uh, collectively magically forgot how to do after 2016. TDS is a hell of a drug. Yeah, Gigakuma, <laughs> you are not wrong. Um, most people have been by yourself. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. And that's one thing is like, if you go read Eric's stuff, he never says woke or non-woke anywhere. He's like, Hey, here's my story. That's, he never says it in his, in on it, on his websites at all. Um, Queen Alina fan. I think it helps because there's a lot of people feeling, uh, undeserved by the mainstream media right now. Maybe if the campaign failed instead of succeeding spectacularly, I would say that it hurts, but it's clear, but it's clear that the advertising is not. It's clear that the ad that that advertising is not as okay. Okay, so that's okay. Sorry, there, there's a little bit of a type, but it's clear that advertising is non woke may have some potential or just be neutral. Okay, so what they're saying there is, you know, it's probably it's either a benefit or it's neutral, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, and I, I can feel that. I mean, I'm just... And the reason I ask these questions because wisdom of the crowd obviously is smarter than I am. And you guys are much smarter than I am. So thank you so much, Queen Alina fan. Thank you so much, Gigakuma. Thank you so much to everybody. I keep forgetting to say thank you this week. My God, my manners are gone. Um, uh, uh, Ira, Ira Brownridge Jr. I agree mostly with what you're saying. I believe as long as it has a great opening... Uh, and good story. He will he'll he will be just fine. I think there's supposed to be a B in there. He'll be just fine uh, Truth is even if those uh, t Terms wasn't used uh, People is gonna have issues with him. Yeah No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. That's no regardless people are gonna have um, Issues with Eric July. No, so thank you so much era Brown Ridge jr. I have to remember to say thank you uh, Except for to you gilded people. You're all a bunch of you gilded people. You're all bunch of savages who share pictures of doggos every day. You're not really savages. I can't even call you that. I thought there was going to be a lot more degeneracy. But no, most people are pretty chill in the Gilded. Outside of the amount of shit that we give each other. But yeah, you guys should go click the link down below. Join the Gilded. It's fantastic. Chen Li. I personally don't think it hurts him because in his uh, intro video, he clearly states that his goal is to make good stories with good characters. Also, uh, have you thought of brewing your own beer, beer, ale, or booze? I, yes. Not in a crazy serious way because so to you can go buy home brew crit, home brew kits and brew your own stuff, right? But just like with everything, you have to start out with like a basic thing. And um you start out with a basic type of beer or whatever, and then you have to grow from there. And it's very expensive and it's hugely time consuming um to do your own beer. It would be really cool. I should probably learn how to do it for when the world goes to hell in a handbasket in like six months. But um, I have thought about it. I just don't. What the hell sound was that? Oh, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> That's a messenger. Um, but yeah, so I I have thought about doing my own ale or but you know it'd be really cool. Like one thing that'd be like that, that makes me think of is if this channel got really fucking big. And some brewery reached out and they're like, hey, we want to make it a drink with crazy beer. What flavor should the a drink with crazy beer be? That would be fucking stellar. That would be so cool if they, but like, I mean, how many subscribers do you have to have before a brewery's like, hey, let's name a freaking beer after you and you get to decide the flavors. I know what I would do already too. I would probably do, I would probably do some version of like a sour Kolsch, like a sour Kolsch mix. Like a blackberry blackberry yeah like a blackberry sour kolsch mix i wonder if you could do that i wonder if the brew techniques are too different anyway yeah i would do something like that it'd be great all right anyway cool enough about beer hey look coffee oh goodness god lucas garrett lucas garrett commented uh it's a little bit of a long one so oh god that was uh that was a microphone that was okay uh lucas garrett i see your points however i think eric drew the line in the sand uh 
And like many of us, he is sick and tired of the woke uh, barrage who intentionally infiltrate, hijacked, and subverted mainstream comic books. Mainstream, mainstream superhero comic book companies. <clears throat> he wants to bring superhero comics back to the center uh, where it's about great storytelling with outstanding characters and world building. Right-leaning outlets are capitalizing on this momentum to further their goal and will um, and it will help uh, short term. However, ISM number one and the Ripperverse will live or die by good storytelling and strategic marketing. Make no mistake about it, Royce. We are in the middle of a culture war and there's no kumbaya in the near future. Okay, do, I wasn't talking about a kumbaya, Lucas. So, like, if you see this, Lucas, you gotta let me know. I don't think I said about doing some kumbaya shit with the left. And when I read this, I was like, man, I, I kind of took exception to that, but I don't know if you were just kind of going for it on this and you weren't. Yeah, anyway, let me know how I should take that because there's a couple of, there's like three different ways I could take that. You just let me know. Anyway. Uh, the Rubicon has been crossed because the left will uh, capitalize on any perceived truth, uh, truce as a moment of weakness. Eric has raised the, his red flag, and I commend him for it because Eric is pretty much uh, taking the hits for creators who refuse to bend the knee to the nonsense and does it his way. And the left will never give him a fair shake. That's a fact. They've made their intentions known. Okay, yeah, so... Lucas, like, you're making a lot of these points about how they crossed the Rubicon and we are in the middle of a culture war and all of these things that I know. All I said was, can, like, can can the political right, when they put him on the show, just say, hey, this is a non-political comic book and it's making fucking buku bucks right now. Can they just not say the word woke? Why is it so bad to ask people to stop using bastardized language that is designed intentionally to confuse people? I don't, I, I fucking hate the word woke and I want it to fucking disappear. And the problem is, is that even I'm using it on the fucking channel now. Because it's so colloquially accepted. Like, right? And I had to go into defining what the fuck it was. But like, no, like I know that, I, I know we're in a culture war, dude. Fuck, man. We've been in one since like 2012. Like, it started way back, man. Like, Barack Obama's second fucking term. You really want to see when the culture war started? Yeah. But, like, no, dude, I've been... I'm well the fuck aware that we're in a culture war. I'm... Now, all I'm saying is, like, in the thumbnail of this video, over three million for non-woke comic. Can they... That's the fucking title. Can they just not say over three million for non-woke comic? Can they say over three million for you know, a, a fucking capitalist comic can over 3 million for just stop using the word woke. I just, because I feel like the more that we use that word, the more power they derive from it because all they want to do is piss us off and destroy us. And so if we keep using this word woke and they go, oh yeah, we'll just be woke to piss you off and we just stop doing it. That's why I call it the fourth great religion. Because these motherfuckers hate fucking... It's not a fucking religion. Bullshit, it's not a religion. It's absolutely a religion. Because they hate religion. They want to be secular. They think that they're fucking smarter than that. I'm like, no. No, you are just as much of a zealot as the, you know, as the Catholic or the Christian or the Jew or the Muslim down the street. And they fucking hate being compared like that. That's why I fucking do it. And I'm fucking Catholic. So, Lucas, hit me up. Let me know, man. Let me know if I took this in the wrong way. Also, you should totally join the Gilded. I think you would have fun over there because there's a lot of people over there that are talking. But yeah, Lucas, so yeah, no. And I don't know, and I don't think that you were... If you were just ranting, that's fine. But like, you got to know, dude, all that stuff, I already know. I never said anything about a Kumbaya moment. So yeah, let me know, Lucas Garrett. Let me know what you think. I know we went back for a second. Um... Yeah, let me know. Talk with me, Lucas, because I, I want to see, man. I want to, yeah, let me know. Um, Dead End 4991, he just joined the uh, Gilded yesterday. Uh, after thinking about it, I agree with the woke statement. I also feel the same way about the term person of color. Yeah. Oh, God. That's one of the most fucking racist terms I've heard. 
person of color. <laughs> Excuse the fuck out of me? You want to talk about othering people? Okay. Uh, it's a stupid made up word that makes no sense at all. Yes. Dead end 4991. Absolutely. So, oh, and Lucas and uh, Dead End, thank you guys so much for commenting. Uh, not my real name. Hey, I see what you did there. Uh, he's also a member of the Gilded, although he hasn't been on the Gilded lately. Uh, there are two media systems. One is liberal and trash. Eric is banned. Uh, Eric is banned from that for calling out its uh, trash talent in evil ways. That leaves conservative outlets. The wokes uh, can complain, but they push him and many others onto the fringe. Uh, they make the dark side. I think, yeah. I agree with most of that to a point. Um, I don't think they push people into the fringe. I think that they go so far out onto the fringe that um, the Overton window has shifted. I think I don't think Eric July is fringe at all. Nah, he might have been fringe 40 fucking years ago. But again, the Overton window has shifted so much. Uh, mainframe online gaming. I think most people want non-woke. That's why it's getting so much attention. Another great video, champ. Thank you so much, Mainframe Online Gaming. And thank you, not my real name. I see what you did there. Uh, thank you so much as well. All right, Garcia, XV Legend. While I do love the fact that Young Rip are getting recognized, I really strongly dislike how the conservative news media outlets try to push Eric's wo uh, work for something uh, isn't try to push Eric's work for something isn't entirely not is entirely not I get what they're doing I would uh, I wouldn't entirely say it hurts towards young Ripa's name and work but cause more division amongst each other than how it already is we've already seen that division that was fabricated and pushed by the far uh, left yahoos so pushing Eric's comic book as anti-woke from the conservative media just uh, giving the enemy more ammunition, which doesn't help uh, too much when looking at that perspective. Young Rip of 59 himself already stated numerous times that his haters, uh, that he doesn't mind what they do as long as it's uh, towards him, not the people he gained help from because uh, he doesn't tolerate slander towards his artists and editors, but will treat them as customers if they plan on reading the book themselves in some way and have some sort of engagement negative reviews and negative feedback is what i mean yeah no and he's flat out said that if you're giving him money and you're reviewing the shit he's like i don't give a fuck he's like i'll take your money he's like cool like fuck i'll take your rage money yeah no and and that's the thing is i just i just i'm just talking about the word woke i'm not saying that you can't come out and say look traditional storytelling non-political that's fine why add the woke caveat there why why say woke? Why that word specifically? The English language, I think we're north of 2,000 words at this point. Fuck, probably closer to three because of all the stupid shit we've added in now. Like, thousands and thousands and thousands of words that we can choose from to describe this. Why add the word woke? Why connect it to the word woke? Why? I know why. I know exactly why. They're trying to rile up the right wing people who are never going to read the book, who might buy it, but they'll never fucking read it. Independent comics fan. <clears throat> I get what you're saying. Uh, he has said on the interviews is no different than how he talked about comics uh, years before uh, starting the Ripperverse. Yes, no, he has been very, very consistent in all of his interviews, and I believe I even said that in this video. Um, I know I said something to that effect. Independent Comics fan again, and I am going to read all three of his because they are short, just like little one-sentence things. So, er, yeah, he did four of them. So, they're very, very short. Like, Garcia XV Legend, he just come down and just like, here, bro, here's some word soup. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Uh, well, not word soup. I'm sorry. That that would be not what guard. But Garcia XV Legend comes down, and he's like, hey, dude, here's all the words in one text. And some people like Independent Comics fans, they, you know, they do multiple words in multiple um uh, Non-woke is what Eric uses, though he doesn't like anti-woke. Um, yeah, but like he only used non-woke when people kept saying anti-woke so much he had to come out and address it. He didn't use non-woke or anti-woke in any of his marketing on his 
Ripaverse page at all. Go do a word search. Woke does not appear in his marketing. He didn't even want to use the word woke. He was forced into it by the conservative media who kept calling his shit anti-woke. He was. He even said he even said as much. Um <clears throat> Uh, he said it in a different way, but people kept saying, he's like, well, they kept calling it anti-woke, non -woke. He's like, no, he's like, if it's anything, it's not anti-woke. He's like, it's just non, it just doesn't have any of that shit in there. But now people are running with that, right? Cause they got to have their fucking headlines so they can put it on fucking interviews with them. It pisses me off. Uh, non-woke is an absence of the political, uh, sh oh, hey, I just turned my computer on or my, uh, tablet. Uh, non-woke is an absence of the political shoving anti-woke, uh, would be an attack on wokeism. Yes. I'm aware that there's a difference between non-woke and anti-woke. Uh, when it comes to marketing, there's not. They both mean the same fucking thing when it's on the title of it. It just, they do. I'm sorry. They, I understand. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, um, independent comics fan. This is his last one. He has done significant work on the blaze over the years. So interviews there makes sense. Yes. No. I have watched him uh, on The Blaze for years. I was actually blown away when all of a sudden Ripa was on there. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Ripa getting down with these motherfuckers? I was like, oh, shit. You guys are about to get wrecked. Uh, and he was very respectful. And I was like, Ripa, you didn't wreck these motherfuckers. But that was cool because it was on the news and why it, why it matters. So, uh, Giovanni, too. Oh, thank you, independent comics fan, for uh, coming out and um, commenting on the channel. Giovanni too many a good perspective just my suggestion when you discuss an interview or other videos always put links in the description it would help uh, you and your audience tremendously yeah I can do that um, I didn't think to do that maybe I'll go back and put the link in the description for this one I mean I use the fucking thumbnail like of the video and it's on the Michael Knowles mold it's on the Michael Knowles show and you can literally type in the title so um, it's less of a click and more of a, you know, have to type it out and search it in, um, YouTube and on Michael Knowles' channel. But yeah, it's there. Uh, I did leave a way for you to find it there. I just didn't do the link. But yeah, no, I might have to do that in the future. Uh, Bill Telness, I'm stoked. Finally, a comic book artist who gets it. Uh, hopefully his success will bring back true comic book culture again because it's exactly what we fans want. I personally stopped purchasing comic books when they started ruining the characters by making them gay. Won't watch Superman until they straighten him out again. Uh, and Lobo, what the fuck? Yeah, the Lobo thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. I remember that. The Lobo thing. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, they went from Lobo being the main man to this fucking femboy beta bitch. Oh my god. I was like, wow. I forgot about that one. Oh man, that was they've just trashed so many characters in the last like four years. Like five years ago, they're like, what are you doing? Like in the last like three, four years, they have just eviscerated so many characters. It's great. Thank you so much, Bill T uh, Telns. Telns? I'm going to go with Telns uh, for uh, commenting. Uh, Gala, what the heck do you think non-woke means? It means not woke, nothing else. Uh, well, bullshit, not in marketing. Uh, I call bullshit. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. Not in marketing. Marketing? No. No. Go take a marketing class and go take uh, especially psychological marketing and what you try to do with people. You have to... The way to get people to watch your stuff and click on it is to well up an emotion inside of people. Uh-uh. Bullshit. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, it does not mean <clears throat> it preaches Christian values and gun rights. Uh, and, uh, FFS. I know what that means. Anyway, uh, story can and should be both uh, non-woke and non-based. Yes, I agree. And that's what his story is. I'm not talking about that i'm talking about the title that the conservatives use on the fucking video that's it that's it that's just the woke word why put it in the title why put it in the fucking title why associate eric july's non-political comic book traditional storytelling traditional like western storytelling style of comic book why tie it even loosely with the word woke why 
Why do it on our side? They're gonna do it on their side. Why use what they do for our marketing? Why? I don't fucking get it. I don't. I really fucking don't. It just... Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Gala, for commenting on the uh, channel. I do appreciate it. Uh, Chris Jimenez. Uh, Wokeness is trash and needs to be destroyed. Anti-woke, uh, non-political, whatever it takes to move from this social contagion that is driving people mad. Yes! Let's stop using their fucking words, please. Can we just stop? Because that's everything that the right ever fucking does. The left does something, and then the right, uh, 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 and then the right has to start fucking like doing. Well, we're just the opposite of that because they're just, they're just like contrarian little reactionists. And I'm like, they're never gonna fucking do anything efficient. That's why I think what Eric is doing, because the right can't make culture. The right has no fucking idea how to make culture. They 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 don't know. They don't know at all. They have no fucking clue. And it's gonna take people who are, well, I guess the Republicans, right? The right and the left, like the Demo the blues and the reds. The blues and the reds, they ain't gonna do shit. We need people who can get the fuck out of all of that shit, like Eric July is doing, like what Gabe El Taib is doing, uh, and even he's still kind of going like anti-political with his with the way that he's doing it. I mean, the guys over at Daily Wire are at least trying to make, you know, stories out there. They're still gonna have some growing pains with that, but like the right has no idea how to make culture. Because all they've ever fucking done is react to the left. And that's what I mean. The anti-woke, non-woke, that is specifically language that was designed and crafted to be reactionary to the left. And that's what they want. So that way we can't actually move forward. Black. Thank you, Chris Jimenez, for commenting. I am not yelling at you guys. I'm just, I'm yelling at the fucking, guys, it's fucking 8.40 in the day. It's almost nine. <clears throat> you already guys, you guys already got me fucking heated this morning. Thank you. DGC, I would say <clears throat> that the podcast or article titles labeling the comic is non woke or anti woke have either been a net neutral or a net positive. The sales numbers speak for themselves. And however, the word has gotten out seems to have worked out well for him. In a short time, <clears throat> the big factor that is either going to carry the book and his company is going to be how good the book is uh if it's a good story with compelling characters that is what is going uh to be why people will buy future issues uh the book should start shipping out this month so by october podcast uh, labels won't be what matters reviews of the book will be a big factor now with the reviews everybody doing a podcast covering the reviews should be honest and not let any bias influence what they think of about the book now how much anyone likes something is subjective but we should all be honest about the pluses and minuses in the story if there are construct uh if they are constructive then hopefully eric would listen to them and make corrections to improve his storytelling uh he is a new author so i don't expect that the book is going to be perfect which is true of every author listening to editors and constructive criticism is how we improve yes i absolutely agree dgc um, and that was a really, really good take. And I don't have to yell at this one because you didn't address the non-woke thing and try to, like, tell me why it's so important that we use the language of the left. <laughs> so, thank you so much for commenting on the video, uh, uh, DGC. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, then we have <clears throat> Shadow, Shadow Binders, Volume 1, Chapter 2. Yeah, I released that yesterday. And you guys didn't watch it. You guys should go watch it. Stop doing do newest first, you dumbass. All right. Um, Kyle Phillips, very cute. Nice change from reading Berserk. I like it. Obviously, Mia's grandfather is from the magical world, so her blood is magic too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? I don't know if he, is he from there? I didn't even think about being from there because they did talk about how how much longer the people from like a different realm would live but grandpa ain't around so uh dcc really enjoyed your video on chapter two liked your first one and was looking forward to this one well thank you so much dcc uh i'll be getting the next one out next week fuck i gotta do that whole video today i have to i have a lot of work i have to do today um 
I have a lot of work I have to do today. All right, and that was really all the comments there on that one, because you guys don't love me. Let's see how it is. Uh, Toph is woke. They want to retcon a character. Oh, yeah. This one here. This one here. Um, newest first. Thank you. All right. John Cross, at this point, it's very much willful obfuscation. These people uh, know deep down that they're fighting windmills. Uh, it's just politically expedient and immediately gratifying to behave as they do. They wish they could make something as good as tough, but they never will because they are inherently talentless and politically blind. Yes, I agree. I think that you are absolutely correct, John Cross. That's great. Xavier Guzman comments, Hey, you're over 700 subs now. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Xavier. Yeah, I really haven't mentioned it on the channel um, because it's just, it's been growing so damn fast. But yeah, we're over 700 subscribers now. Uh, have been for about two days. Um, I think 704 right now. Um, it kind of goes in waves. Like, it'll climb really high, and then it goes down, and then it goes back up. and then, Yeah, so um, it always goes in waves. But, yeah, we're over 700. So, I mean, realistically, if we keep growing the way we're going to do, we'll hit 1,000 subscribers before Halloween. I really believe that. I believe that if you guys help get the word out, we could be at 1,000 subscribers before Halloween. Like, And that would be great. So, thank you so much, Xavier Guzman. Uh, Kyle Phillips. Uh, if you can't write a character sold, then you you can't write. Uh, specifically, uh, superficially written characters feel and speak differently. Uh, I can see what you're saying there for sure. Yeah. Elongated man forever. I agree. Cora isn't a Mary Sue. She's just severely badly written. Uh, correction. Most characters in Cora aren't written good. Yeah. There are a couple of them. I feel that Toph's daughter was written well. Um, uh, Chief Beifong. Um, I thought Korra was what was the guy's name, Zahim or whatever, in season three, the villain of season three. Oh, dude, see, anybody who's like, well, it's used to Mary Sue, you didn't see season three and season four. <laughs> like, dude, no, like, Mary Sue's do not get treated the way that she got treated by that, Z whatever the Zahir was it, Zahir, Zahim, something like that. I don't know, yeah, no. Now, that guy was that guy was baller, dude. His chicks, his girlfriend's head gets blown up and that guy was like he like he's like talking to himself about like not having like worldly possessions and he and he literally becomes spiritually free after his girlfriend's head gets blown the fuck off. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. <laughs> like no, there were good moments in the show, and I thought that guy, I thought his character was really good. It did have good characters in the show. There just wasn't enough of them for the show itself to be considered uh, good. Elongated Man Forever says, nice video. Thank you so much. He did two of those very close together, so I'm... Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Elongated Man Forever. Um, <clears throat> Garcia XV Legend comes back. Ah, so one of these yahoos are trying to manipulate fans of Avatar The Last Airbender to spout such nonsense to say that this was the case for this character and people would find her woke in the terms of her portrayal. Uh, they need to leave my favorite character out of their dirty mitts. Uh, heck, which is why I'm no longer excited for the Netflix live-action version of Avatar The Last Airbender, considering the original creators decided to disband from the project, which I personally think sucks, because that made me optimistic slash skeptical. Now I am concerned. Lastly, I am with you on The Legend of Korra. I feel the same damn way. Mary Sue my ass, but definitely needs better writing, and I thought it was uh, decent at best. Yeah, it had its moments. It does. Uh, there was a lot of, like, there was a lot of, like, uh, philosophical stuff they were going at. there was a lot of underpinning things in that story that I don't think a lot of people realized and I think that that's what what killed the show uh, I genuinely think the writers were going a little too big brain and I will I will I'll have to do it like I'll have to talk about that in a live stream one day or something like that Evan writes I never considered Cora to be a Mary Sue she acts tough but always loses she wouldn't lose so much as a Mary Sue yeah no she really wouldn't like she acts tough, but constantly gets her ass beat and, like, constantly has to be rescued. So, eh? I don't know. I just, I feel the same way. I, but I've heard people call her a Mary Sue. She's a Mary Sue. And I'm just like, oh. 
And the, but the problem is, is that it's become acceptable to just throw out wishy-washy words like the word woke in whatever way that people want to. Um, and then not really have to worry about the definitions. It's like, well, I'm just going to say this word and who gives a fuck about the definition? Well, that's not what the fuck a Mary Sue is, you stupid fuck. Like, it's not. There's a difference. Like, Mary Sue is an actual literary fucking term. So, but yeah, I don't know. Colloquially, I don't think people know what the fuck they're talking about anymore. So, I don't know. But that's where it's at. But anyway, guys, that was this week's reading the comments. I actually was able to get this one done in under an hour. So, that's awesome. That means rendering time isn't going to be crazy so anyway i appreciate everybody being here thank you all so much for checking out the channel don't forget to subscribe hit the like button ring the notification bell share this with everybody share the channel with everybody and let them know that we got people out here talking about you know well, not just hate watching videos i'm not gonna turn into a hate watch channel that's not my that's not my gig but let people know what you saw here if you liked it hey if you comment on his video he tries to get uh, to read all of the comments every week um and so far it hasn't gotten to a point that i can't do it so i'm i'm thinking if we hit like 10,000 subscribers then it might be a little much but maybe not maybe the same amount of people comment that'd be really cool so but you guys let me know what you guys thought about this uh in the comments below let me know what topics that you guys would like to see covered and don't forget click the link in the description to go join my gilded and join up with a bunch of other like-minded individuals such as yourselves and i will see you all next time right here on a drink with crazy cheers everybody thank you for watching a drink with crazy if you liked the conversation make sure to click here to see more